Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Avarice, and I'm going to burst your game. Today, we are looking at Squareface. Squareface is an indie game, developed and published by Van Cubo. Selling price is currently $14.99 on Steam, release on September 12, 2016. We did receive a free copy of this game for review. Alright, so, what are we looking at? Well, up in the top left corner here, we got our current coin count, which tells us how many coins we have and how many we've collected in the game. A quick item, or a quick inventory, I guess, of uh, the guns we have equipped, our options menu, our exit the game option, play the game, uh, our pets menu, skills menu, weapons menu, and costume menu, and of course our main character. So, options menu. Um, general settings, we have an SFX and music volume options. We have fixed crosshairs, which I will get into this about in a minute. I have a serious problem with this, and we'll show you in-game. Invert camera rotation, which I do not use. Camera sensitivity and camera distance, both nice options to have. Could be uh, could be a bit bigger. Could use a nice a few more options there. Be nice. Uh, controls completely rebindable. Very nice. There is no uh, Xbox pad controller support. Um, we do have the ability to grow and shrink our HUD, which I will show you in game. Uh, I love this feature. This is fantastic, and I think every game should have this option that uses a HUD. That's that's great. Uh, video. Resolution. Alright, so, first major problem with the game. Resolution. I have a 1600 by 900 monitor. Um, I have to play the game in window mode. I cannot use full screen due to the recording setup I have. I'm having to currently pay in 1360 by 768 resolution, as you can see here. Reason for this is because when I increase my resolution to 1600 by 900 the window does not increase in that size as well. The window stays the same. The window does change if I make it smaller, but the windows do not get larger than 1600 by 900. I don't know if it's something to do with my monitor or not. I have a serious problem with this. And I'll show you this in game. I'll show you this real, real quick here on the menu, actually. So you can see down here we have our, we have our play button, our exit the game menu, or, and our option, and our options menu. So if I go ahead and change my resolution to 1600 by 900, you'll see that my resolution does change to the size of my monitor. It has changed. But the window has not gone all the way across to the right of the screen. And so this over here, the play button, which is down here in the corner, I can barely see, and you will not be able to see at all. Along with the options menu, which is right here, and the exit. You can't see these at all in, your, in the recording. I can barely see them. I can barely see the options menu tick, which I'm going to go ahead and get back into and reset my resolution. Now, earlier I was playing around with this to see if maybe I could just increase my resolution to a higher setting and that would work fine. It would scale all the way across the, screen, all across the screen. What happened is the options menu completely disappeared. I had no way to get back into the options and I had to alt-tab out of the game, shut it down, and restart. Um, not a fan of that. So I'm going to go ahead and set, reset the uh, resolution there. So, that needs to be fixed. Van Cubo, let's, let's get on this, please. This, this needs to be fixed right here. Um, Death of Field. I have an issue with this. I'll show you why in a minute. In-game, I turned it off because I did not like it. It was on by default. Um, Film Grain. It is not by, on by default. I have not used it yet, but it's nice to have that option. Alright, so... Other options we have over here. So, costume menu. So, we can see here we have our pocket size and coolness bar. Uh, we have little tabs right here that allow us to change what we're looking at. We have a blueprint button, a OK button, the ability to change our gender from male to female. And we have a few different skin colors we can choose. Like, if I want to be blue or green, yellow, brown, tan, we're just going to go with this. We're going to go with standard white American. Why not? Um, this is your standard character you get from the very beginning. Uh, the only thing that is different fr from the beginning is the fact that he is carrying a baseball bat. Everything else I got from the first two, three missions of the game. Uh, so this is kind of what you're looking at to begin with so far. So, pocket size. Pocket size is a... It, it, it's what determines how much coins you can carry in the game while you're on mission. Um, if you fill up this your pocket size with coins, you cannot carry anything else with you. Um, so the coins that are floating around in the game will actually turn red and you will not be able to physically grab them. Bit of a problem with that, but 
you can increase it with backpacks and different pants and shirts, so not too big of an issue. Coolness bar. So this is one of the four skill trees that are in the game, which I'll show you in a minute. Um, I believe that the only way to increase this is to actually change your clothing. Not a bad thing to do, I guess. Uh, it's okay. You get access to a few different options here. You can see the four tiers we have. Each one of these tiers, when we max it out, allows us to have access to the next skill up. Uh, so that's kind of cool. So we can look. At, we can change our faces and glasses, hats, things we carry on us, things like that. And it, you can just kind of go through and build your character as you want, then buy it all in total. Uh, currently, I am broke because I spent all the money I got originally on guns. So we'll get to that in a minute. Blueprint. Final option over here on the screen before we exit out of here. This allows you to actually print a real-life paper of your character, and you can cut it out and glue it together to make a standing physical character in the game. You can just, like, sit on your desk and, you know, have it. That's kind of cool. It's a nice little option. I think that works really well with the theme they're going for in this game, which is very paper crafts kind of style. I like that. So, it's cool to have. Alright, so, weapons. So you begin the game with a matchstick, the uh, machine pistol here, and the basic handgun. So I've upgraded these, because that matchstick was awful, to a baseball bat, which arguably is still awful. The machine pistol, which is probably the worst thing in the universe, I upgraded to a shotgun. And the basic hand handgun, which is actually okay, I upgraded to a better handgun, because why not? So... To discuss the art style really quick, I think this is the best way to show it off. Um, I actually like this very paper, high-definition art style. Then it's just kind of like glued together. You can see there where you see like the cardboard, the inside of a cardboard box. Um, the kind of ruffles you see there inside of a cardboard box. That's really cool. It makes it... It gels really well with the theme they're going for of... It's a bunch of cardboard just stuck and glued together. And it has a high-quality texture on the outside. That's really cool. I like that. So, not too bad of an option there. The complaint I have with this, there is no way to easily find out the information you want for your guns, and the game does not tell you how to do so. It doesn't tell you how to get your information. It's easily available. It's just, it doesn't tell you how you can get to it. So the way you can get to the information for your weapons, your guns, your sidearm, whatever, click and hold on the weapon. It's that simple. It tells you your accuracy, your rate of fire, the damage you do with your weapon, um, all that other stuff. Nice to have. Nothing in the game tells you this. I found this out by complete accident. So it's nice that we have that, but it's it's not good to you know keep us uninformed on that. So a little little text right there or something like that, just to kind of tell you, hey, this is what this gun does. That'd be nice. Um, this five by fifteen that tells you your kind of magazine size and how many ammunition you can carry before you get to reload. So that's cool. You can see here there are other guns available. There's a lot of guns available. Uh, get a mini gun there. Snipe rifles. Um, which currently we cannot afford any of them. So we're just going to stick with this setup right there. Skills. So the skill tree. So you can see here that coolness bar I was talking about earlier. The guns menu, a strength menu, and a survival menu. So coolness is currently our highest. So we're going to use this as our example. So you can see here you have your bar and you have your four ticks. Each one of these allows you access to the next tier. So this would be the first tier. So if we were to get to our coolness bar to that level, we'd unlock crowd control, which lets the enemies have up to 15% chance to join us. So that's kind of cool. And see right here, it actually gives you the information. This skill improves as the bar progresses. Why they couldn't just implement that into the weapons screen, I don't know. Should be done. Get on that. Um, so not a bad little thing here. You have a few different things, you know. Omni Slayer, 25% chance to hit multiple enemies with any melee weapon, except for the chainsaw. You know, more landmines, or landmines, yeah. Unlock explosive landmines. Which, that's weird that that's, that's locked, when it really isn't. I'll show you that in a minute. Grenades, unlock explosive hand grenades. That's also, I don't understand what that's about. I'll show you that in a minute. Is that pipe bomb? Yeah, it is. Oh my god. I'll show you this in a minute. Okay. That's... That's not, that's messed up. So, pets. Pets you can get... I think for the most part, you just want to have a pet with you to carry stuff. Um, you can see here it has a pocket size. It just kind of follows you around. It has a nice health gauge. Can't really do a lot of damage. Uh, so the basic thing is the pig 
It just walks behind you, carries coins, and that's about it. All the way up to the tank, which does maximum damage, has a very slow speed, decent amount of health, and a low pocket size, which I think is kind of silly because it's a freaking tank that can carry a lot of stuff. So I don't really understand the mechanics behind that, but, you know, whatever. Um, I do kind of like that where the battery is just kind of strapped to it with a band-aid. And again, it ties in with the theme they're going for, a very paper, crafty, kind of built-together things that just work. I'm very okay with that. So let's go ahead and hop in the game. You can see here we have five different menus. Um, the beginning area is the bedroom, and each one of these gives you access to new different stages, I think which is what this is. Currently, you can see I'm on stage 3, but I have unlocked stage 4 as well. Um, the stars next to this allows you to kind of... Each one of those stars is a kind of mission or quest objective. And if you complete it, you get a little star that tells you you completed everything in that area. Um, there is a arena mode down here, which I believe is just like a survival, survive everything if you can. Brutal pool, which... I haven't tried that out yet, but it looks pretty cool. I want to imagine that it's just pool balls rolling everywhere and you don't want to get hit by them. That that sounds like it'd be really cool. Uh, so let's go ahead and play in Paper Cut, which I was already on. We need to collect five Paper Craft materials, which we've already done. We need to collect all the Paper Craft tools, collect all the Paper Craft materials. Okay, so we need to do those two. We have the ability to start the mission with a number of coins that we have. I have 173 coins. I want to leave all coins at home because... The more coins you bring with you, the less you can pick up in the game. And you want to be able to do that because you want to be able to get uh, save more and get more to upgrade later. So I'm going to leave all my coins at home. Let's go ahead and hop in. So we have our little beginning cinematic here. I'm going to go ahead and just skip that. So my main mission is to talk to the old man. I'm going to go ahead and skip that. We're going to just focus on the gameplay and get into it. So you see right behind my character... He has a little green bar, a blue bar, and a red bar. Green bar is the health bar. Blue is your stamina, which, with how it's used, I think will never run out. Ever. You could basically run for a long time and never worry about it. And the red bar, which is our flashlight. Flashlight battery power, so when that runs out, we are out of energy and we can't see. Not useful for this level, I don't think. I think it's intended for darker areas of the game. Uh, this is probably still a tutorial-type level. So they probably don't have a real need for that integrated into the mission yet. Um, up here in the top left corner, you can see our little guy there with the yellow number next to him. That yellow number is coins. If we go over here and pick up this coin, you'll see it increased by five. Um, paw right next to it, I imagine, is for your pet. Green, I imagine, is for some type of base. I believe there is some kind of base building in this game to some degree. Um, you'll see a lack of zombies, that's because I haven't really activated any kind of uh, traps or uh, ambushes quite yet. If we were to go over to this little stack, I imagine we're going to get ambushed. So, let's get in, before we get too far, let's get into my biggest problem with the game. Biggest problem with the game, the camera. I cannot stand this camera system. It is dumb, and I hate it. So, you can see there my reticule is basically at the top of the screen. And if I switch to my pistol really quick, you'll see if I was to fire, the bullet actually goes to where that reticule is, right? And this is the lowest I can go. I cannot go any lower or look any higher with my camera. This is it. That's as far as we can go. Zombies are normally about this high. About as high as this guy here is. So if I put my reticule over him, which is, let's pretend he's a zombie really quick. If I was to put my reticule over him, you could see we're basically looking at the floor. We're looking at the floor. And I don't understand why you would decide to do your camera system in this way. I feel that if we wanted to nice set camera setup, set it set it like this, where it follows your character. You can kind of adjust, you can change your character, which way you're looking, turn your camera around, and then fire and you know aim your reticle at certain places and fire there. I don't see how that would be an issue. This is awful. This feels awful. I don't like the way it handles. And this ties into the fixed crosshair, which I wanted to bring up a little while ago. So if we turn this off, this is on by default. If we turn this off, you can see now the character just follows a reticule, but the camera does not. So let's say I'm walking along to this thing. I get ambushed. I walk over here to this thing here. I get ambushed by some zombies that are behind me. I can turn my character around to look behind me and quickly engage at them. But if there's more behind him, I can't see the actual 
stress of the situation. I won't be able to see how many are there. So if we hold right click and turn a camera, you can see there it takes me almost two entire turns to get completely turned around. Which in the kind of faster paced combat that this game does have in some cases is just abysmally slow. I can set my camera to where I wanted it in the first place, which is nice. It's just, just it still feels bad. And I think of the two options we have available, I think leaving the fixed crosshair on is much better for ease of use. Now granted, this is still not a good camera system, it's just better than the other alternative. Okay, so I also wanted to talk to you about the grow and shrink HUD option. Now this is really nice, and I think all games should do this, and here's why. If you pay attention to my bottom HUD of the screen, or even the top of the HUD right there, you'll see I'm going to decrease the size. By quickly pressing the minus key, I can decrease the size of my, my uh, HUD there, or increase it to a size I'm comfortable with. I think that is fantastic. I like having a nice, great big HUD that I can view. I can see all the information on there very easily without having to strain my eyes or look too close to the monitor. I don't want to be face planning into the game to see things, so it's nice that this game has that option. Kudos to Van Cubo for that. I highly appreciate it. All right, so you see a few things floating around here. A little while ago, we grabbed some gold coins. These give us five coins, uh, five coins a piece. Now you see some batteries here. If we turn on our flashlight really quick with F, and like I said, this is not going to be useful on this level. I think it's more useful for darker missions later on that we'll see, or probably won't. See. You won't see, but I will see eventually when I get to them. Um, so we turn that off. You can see there I used a lot of my biter power, which is shown on the bottom where the I press the F icon on my HUD, and it's also shown right behind my character. If we grab that battery, yes, thank you, it recharges. That's nice. So this little fire, what is that? This is a booster. If you collect this, this boost allows you to travel around really fast. Um, this one, I believe, gives you actual speed. So yeah, you can see I'm running really fast now. So that's nice. That's nice to have. Um, gunplay. So we have our handgun. We fire a few times. You see that your gun has a little laser sight on it. Gives you a rough idea where you're kind of shooting and aiming, but again, not really necessary since you have your reticule. Let's go ahead and use a shotgun since this really just destroys people. Um, melee weapon. I have an issue with this. So, to use your melee weapon, you don't actually equip it, I don't believe. There's no way to actually just equip your melee weapon and just use it. You press Q, and you just you, your character strikes out with it. You can hold Q, and your character will continuously strike out. There's no way to just equip it and keep using it. So if I was to just, you know, shoot my gun really, or switch my gun really quick, and I need to get hit, hit a zombie that's really close to me. So I hit the zombie that's close to me. My character is now holding the weapon, but I still have the shotgun activated. And if I was to left click to attack a game with the melee weapon, my character fires a gun. That is silly. I think we should have the ability to, you know, just mouse wheel up and down. Be very nice, easy control. Why can't we do that? All right, so let's go ahead and switch to the handgun. Very easy control there. So you can see here next to that we have water bombs, which are really cool. I'll show you that there in a second when we activate some zombies. Let's go ahead and piss some of them off. Got a health kit really quick. So let's get some explosives really quick here. And I was expecting to get ambushed. Guess we did not. Um, so here's another thing I really appreciate. I like the ability where things that are in the way of the camera disappear. That's nice. It cuts away and lets me keep seeing things. It, it, it's not helped a lot by the fact that the camera system is just awful to use. It doesn't make it worse, though, so that's nice. It doesn't scrunch the camera all the way up against your character's back of the head and just makes the game horrible in every way. So that's nice that that's there. That floating green arrow points us the direction we need to go. We, like I said, we're not actually going to do the main mission. We're just going to kind of mess around and explore. Um, so let's go up to this box cutter. So you can see here, again, I'm looking down at the box cutter to click it. And when I do, the whole camera, I'm looking at the floor. So if I go up to this item, I'm going to get ambushed. And the zombies are going to appear literally out of nowhere. I don't like that. I don't like the zombies just appear. There's no, They're not just kind of shambling about. There are zombies at times that do just shamble around. I don't like it when they just appear out of thin air. If they were to maybe crawl over the side or something like that, that'd be cool. But they just appear. There we go. You see, he just came out of nowhere. 
I wanted to show it where he actually falls from the sky. They spawn like right there and they just fall down. I don't I don't get that. I don't understand why that's a thing, but it is. So there we go. Let's get behind him and take him out. There we go. So you see we killed him and we got a can of cola. A little energy drink there it respawns our stamina, which we can run if we hold shift. You can see I'm running. It's doing almost nothing to the stamina bar, and how fast it recharges, you never have to worry about it, I don't think. See, there you go. They just spawned in out of nowhere. Hello, he just spawned in behind me. So these things just start spawning in, and I don't I don't like that. It, it feels very out of place. So, other weapons besides the shotgun and the pistol and the bat. We have a M option, which allows us to set a landmine. So you remember earlier in the skill tree... We had the ability to unlock mines. Well, what's that? Why do I have the ability to use a mine when it's not unlocked? Does it give it a more powerful version of a mine? Do I get better mines? Do I get more mines? I don't know. But I have mines available right now. I can use a mine and place it and blow them up. So, why is it that I can unlock it in a skill menu when I just already have them? Is it something that if we unlock it, we'd start with a mine? I don't I don't know. The game is not very clear on that. Okay, so moving along the bottom of the line there, we got water bombs. These are kind of cool because it sticks with the paper craft kind of style they're going for in their game, where everything's very high res and looks, you know, but it's still like glued to cardboard. So if I was to throw water at this guy here, let's throw it in front of him. You'll see that he slows down and gets very sticky. And that's because we've made him wet. So his glue and his paper has made him soggy, and he's not as rigid as he was. And he's having trouble moving along. If I kill these guys really quick, just to continue to touch on that, if I kill those guys and get close to him, this guy is very much like a boomer from Left 4 Dead. Very fat, very slow. He explodes and he affects you with a ghastly cloud. Um, it does do a little bit of damage, I think, but not nearly as much as... A boomer wood in Left 4 Dead. Key thing with it is that it makes you sticky. Let's try to kill him. There we go. So you can see there, my character is kind of stuck to the ground and my movement is very much hindered, making it very hard to run away from larger groups of enemies. So that's kind of cool. They're sticking with their paper craft idea, um, which is nice. These guys just spawned in out of nowhere, which I don't like. It doesn't give you that sense of security. You know, I felt like I was okay with having my back to the wall. Apparently I wasn't, because they were just spawning in behind me. So that's cool. It's it's nice that they stuck to the, uh... Heh, stuck. Uh, stuck to the papercraft idea, where what they're going for. It's very nice. Um, and they implemented weapons to kind of affect that. So here we have grenades, which again, we had the ability to unlock, but I can just use them right now without unlocking anything. Oh, go away. Oh my god, go away. Get out of here. Let's kill these fast ones. These slow ones, not really a problem. Alright, so let's go ahead and throw a grenade at these guys and see what it does. I feel like you gotta throw it in front of him just a little bit. Uh, it does tend to bounce. Did quite a bit of damage to him. Almost killed him in one hit. Ow, there's a guy there. Let's shoot him. Let's get our gun out. Take him out. So you can see there, it does a good amount of damage. And we got sticky because we were too close to him. Get some more bombs there. All right, so last one we have pipe bombs. This is literally the pipe bomb from Left 4 Dead. So if we were to do that, you can see it swarms to them. They swarm around it. It explodes and kills them all. That's very cool. It's a very cool option that that's there. Um, so let's say we're out of ammo. We have the ability to order more and have some literally fall in from the sky. We can press B, and it opens up a little in-game store, which we can order items with. Not a bad option. Nice to have. So, that's really about it. There's a few things you can do, like activate items and find items in the game. Get some nice glasses. Uh, it's cool. The game is hindered by a few things. Oh, I wanted to show you this real quick. Video. Depth of field. Instantly blur everything. Everything has gotten blurry. I just... This is not depth of field. This is just a blur camera. Turn this off. This is silly. 
This is awful. Why would you have that in your game? Sorry about that, I had to take a phone call. Um, that was pretty much wrapped up with the review as it was, so let's go ahead and get our final verdict in. So, what do I think? Well, the art style is enjoyable. Uh, pretty much all I have to say about that one. It's they, they recognize what kind of art style they have, and they went for it, and they nailed it. The music, while is good, is there's not enough of it. There just isn't. There needs to be a lot more of it. It needs to be less re uh, repetitive, uh, more variants of it. There needs to be less time like this where there's just no music playing at all. It makes the game very boring, quite honestly. Um, gameplay. Gameplay is great. It feels good. It handles right. Except for the camera. Camera is easily the worst thing in the game. If they were to fix that camera, then I would say, yes, this game is worth $14.99. As it is, I can't see it being worth that price. $14.99 is just too much to ask for a camera that kills this game. It really does. I would want to play so much more of this, but that camera just makes me not want to play it ever again. And that's sad. If there was another option to maybe fix it, that'd be great. I'd be very okay with it. I'd play a lot more of this. And if they do add that in the future, then yes, this game is worth $14.99. As it currently is, I have to say no, it's not. Squareface, ladies and gentlemen, for those who are interested, thank you very much for watching. Please remember to subscribe for more game content every day. If you like my work, feel free to like this video. If you did not, the dislike button is not that far away. Please visit me on Patreon if you would like to support the channel at patreon.com slash burstyourgame, where a $1 donation makes every bit of a difference and allows me to increase the quality of my work. Also follow me on Twitter to get daily notifications of my content at Burst Your Game. That camera, though.